Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this video I would like to show you exactly why and how what I call a crud mentality can absolutely ruin your application and obviously I also want to show you some very practical ways of thinking and how we can implement our applications in a way that we escape this crud mentality and that makes our applications more robust. Before we dive into code, I would like to tell you that this type of problem we had at work on a certain application that we need to refactor and we had a terrible performance and problems due to this scrub mentality. And what I will show you here, this code is kind of like a stripped down version of a similar setup that we had at work, but it helps you to understand exactly where the problems might be and how we can solve them. To understand exactly what the problem is, let's take a look at this very simple form. And this is a form that I have seen a lot in web applications, but you can have it also in desktop applications or mobile applications or other types of applications. So the basic thing that I want to draw your attention at right now is that we have this kind of like form that has different parts. We have this name and an email, we have then this list of relative for a student, and then we have this address. And the thing is that whenever we do something, we need to click this update student button. And when we do this update, then basically we want to update the entire student with all this type of information at once. Translating this into code and having this concept of services in this case, we would end up having a student service that would look something like this. So we would have this update student async method that would kind of like perform an update on the entire student. Now, if we look in this method, we kind of like do a lot of things here. We, first of all, need to get the existing student from the database. We need to include all navigation properties because we need to update the entire student at once. We do a very basic null check and then we start to do a lot of branching. Like for instance, if this existing student name is not equal with the name itself, then we update the name. And the reason why we actually need this if here in this case is that we need, based on what type of action we do, we need to add a certain audit log. So in our case, we just create a new audit log that has this update type name updating, and then we add everything to our existing student and to our audit logs. And then we need to perform the exact same thing on the email. And then we need to perform the exact same thing on the address. Here I even have extracted this on, in, in a check address equality method that returns if two addresses are the same. And in this case, or if they are not the same, we just update the address. And once again, we create this basic audit log. Now here is where everything gets more complicated because if we want to do an update for the relatives, we would need to implement here kind of like a very complicated logic that would compare the two collections of relatives, the one that it is on the existing student with the one that we actually get from our client. And then based on that comparison, we need to define exactly what we need to remove from the existing student relatives and what we need to add to the existing student relatives. And that can get really cumbersome very, very fast. And before we get into the pitfalls and problems that this specific code can generate for your application and make it really bad and awful, I just want to point out that yes, you might say that we can extract things here in a repository, for instance, when we do data access or data changes. And then we can even, I don't know, maybe extract everything each if could be in a dedicated method and so on and so forth. And I would say yes, that's totally true and I didn't do this on purpose, but we would end up still having this code or the body of this method would be shorter, but we would still have a lot of navigation to do to a lot of different other methods that perform certain tasks. And that wouldn't really help us with the problems that this code actually creates for our application. And the very first problem, and it is also where we have started basically on that project at work, is that hey, we have very slow entity framework for performance. Now, if you have this kind of like current mentality set up with an update method that does all the updates at once, obviously you will have a lot of performance problems with Entity Framework Core. And the reason is that if you do something like this, you need to load all the navigation properties at once and everything should also be tracked. So obviously this is not a good performance. The second big problem that we have with this kind of like setup that follows this crowd mentality is that we end up having spaghetti code. The main reason for why I say that this gets to a spaghetti code is once again, here we have a very simple example with some very, very few business logic. But in the project that we had, there are a lot of different requirements of validation and doing things or doing certain things if certain criteria is met and everything needs to be here in this specific code block. 
and this can become very cumbersome and can potentially cause even other problems because you might want to write something to the database and then uh, only afterwards do something else so you cannot have an entire transactionality on this type of update so there are really a lot of different potential problems here and that's why we come to another downside of this specific setup is that it will become a heaven for bugs literally in this type of update methods you will have a lot of bugs because whenever you change something somewhere you will find out that some business logic is violated in another place in the same method actually last but not least this method is really a nightmare to test no matter if you use mocking or if you don't use mocking really it is a nightmare to test now even if you move different parts of this method in some other methods like for instance you might move this into a repository you might create as i said different methods for this one maybe the equality check for the address we can move on the address itself so we can unit test it there but still the overall behavior of this specific update will be a nightmare to test and the results of the test will not be reliable because from my experience is that you will not be able to really cover all the different scenarios that meet the different business logic recommendations for all the things that need to be in one single place. And last but not least, due to the thing that I have mentioned so far, methods like this update student async will end up having a very high cyclomatic complexity. Having high cyclomatic complexity is actually bad for our application because it indicates code paths that are really hard to test, hard to understand, hard to extend, and they are prone to defects. To get out of this crud mentality and create robust applications, we need to think more in terms of tasks that we need to perform in our application. So let me show you what I mean by that. Here I have an updated version of the same form. And in this updated version, you will see that we have a name and under the name, we have already this update. And under the email, we have a button in which we want to update only the email address. And then for the relatives, we have changed this a little bit. We have added here this action column where we have the delete, and then we can have this add relative button. And then for the address, we once again have a dedicated section and a button on update address. And when we click this button, we would like to update only this address. A refactored version of this code would have a refactored student service that instead of having just one update method, we have several different update methods that update only parts of that specific student. Like for instance, we have this change student name async in which we want to update only the student name and everything is easier and much more straightforward we only need to load the data that we need for that specific update operation so that would definitely increase our entity framework performance and overall it will reduce the cyclomatic complexity we won't have spaghetti code it would be easier to test than what we had before and overall that's really a huge win and similar to this we have a dedicated method to update the student email in which we just update the student email and we have the change student address in which we just update the student address. Regarding relatives, we have two dedicated methods, one for adding relatives and one for removing relatives. Now let me also move over to the controllers to show you how the controllers for these two types of different setups might look like. So here is the student's CRUD controller, which is obviously regarding this CRUD mentality in which we just have one single method. Obviously, since we are using a service here in this controller, it's not too bad. We just use the service and just need to update. What we have created is just an update student DTO that would contain all the necessary information and that we get actually from the body. And we usually use this HTTP put here because we want to update the entire student at once. Now, if we move over to this student task-based controller, where we have this tasks based approach when designing our application, here we'll see that we actually have a lot of different endpoints. We have, for instance, an endpoint that contains the student ID and the name, and with the HTTP patch to this endpoint, we would just update the name of the student. Similarly, we would have an HTTP patch for updating the student email, and the endpoint would look something like this. And then we would have an update and HTTP patch for this address. And then for the relatives, we actually have dedicated or different methods. We have an HTTP post on student ID and relatives, and we have an HTTP delete on student ID and relatives in which we just delete a relative. And to have an overall visual representation on how this might look like at the end, let's run the application. So you will see that we have the student scrud, which is this scrud mentality where we have just one put for one single method. And even if we go here, we see that the body that we need to provide for this method is actually huge and it, it's really, really bad. And then on the other hand, we have this task-based approach 
where we have okay here we update the name here we just update the email here we just update the address here we just update the relatives or add a new relative and here we just delete a new relative also if you need to change something in this change student name async method it wouldn't break any other update operations that you have exposed through other endpoints while we are here in the student service if you update something anywhere here it could be that it would break or violate the business logic or rules for an update that we want to do maybe here or here so bottom line is that a very good way to actually make your applications more robust easier to test easier to extend and with fewer bugs is to go outside and to leave behind this crud mentality because this creates spaghetti code and this creates code that it's really very hard to work with. Instead, try to think more about tasks and things that the user can perform and then provide a UI that would allow users to simply interact and perform actions that are as atomic as possible, as small as possible and as self-contained as possible. This will improve the, the performance of your application and it will make it overall more robust. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel if you didn't do this already. If you have any type of question or just want to get the discussion started, don't, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave a comment and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.